Greetings and salutations YouTube, Rocky here again. Today I'm going to have a quick video about how to transfer fun, uh, files from PC to an Amiga or an Amiga. Right, so there are four distinct methods that I'm going to talk about. Method numero uno. Method number one relies on you having a uh, Workbench 3 or later. On that there's a tiny little prob uh, problem program called CrossDOS. CrossDOS allows you your PC to read. Well, I'll start again. CrossDOS allows your Amiga to read PC format floppies or my format floppies. Um, so floppy drive from PC to Amiga. Okay. Problem number one with this. Um, well, basically, it's only meant to transfer tiny files. So everything you've got on a double density floppy, not a high density floppy, a double density floppy, you can transfer. So, and before you ask. No, there's not enough capacity to put an ADF on this and put it across into an Amiga and have it put back to disk. So you can't take like games you download off the net in ADF format, that's Amiga disk format, put them on a floppy, put them onto the Amiga and then make them work again as you know physical floppies. You can't do that. The advantages of that, well, if you happen to have cross DOS with Amiga Workbench 3 or later, now it will work with version 2. So if you're having a 600 or a 500 plus, it will work on the workbench that, you just copy the file across. It's cheap, it's free, um, but it's really not meant to transfer to like text files and things like that, you know, the odd sound, nothing of any size. Uh, pretty much useless, to be honest. Method numero 2. You use a null modem cable. Null modem cable physically connects Amiga to PC. I don't know if you mind down in the back. Uh, advantage of that, well... It is still pretty cheap, and there's a physical connection there. Null modem cables can be bought off the net for as little as three quid. A null modem cable is basically a way of linking a computer to a computer. Back in the old PC gaming days, that's how we used to play like multiplayers. <laughs> Somebody bring the PC around, we connect up using a null modem. Star Wars Episode One Pod Racer, for example, that's a good game. Same can be said on the Amiga. That's how we used to do it. Um, however, that requires you to have software on the PC and the Amiga which is a bit of a fucking nightmare to be perfectly honest because the Amiga setup is a nightmare and not all PCs have serial ports either 9 or the 24 pin you can get USB converters but then it starts to get expensive and messing around and to be honest your Amiga is going to need a hard drive to put the, you know, put the files once they've copied across other you just shove them in you know, like the, the desktop the RAM disk and then copy them across to floppy and oh, it's messing around I can never ever get it to work I tried several times couldn't get it to work. Which is a bit of a nightmare. Method 3. You, If your Amiga happens to have a hard drive, now I'm talking like either an internal 2.5 inch ID or a compact flash hard drive in your 1200, 600, or even if you happen to have a hard drive plugs at the side there, you could take that to bits and pull out the hard drive. You can connect that to the PC. With a 2.5 inch, you're going to need a, a converter. Or just a three and a half inch up plugs it into a standard ID cable. You can use Win UEE or U or UAE or whatever you want to read it and put files on and off. Well, the advantage, advantage of that is you know that's physical copying as many files as you want, so you can put a ton of files on it and then transfer it back to the Amiga. The disadvantage of that is it's a lot of messing about. You have to crack open the cases of the Amigas, move the files, move the move the hard drive across, move the files across. It's a funny boss nightmare. And I would recommend it. Method four. Four. Is what I'm going to show you. And the way I like to do it. And what I think is the only real option to do it now. Uh, PCIMCA. Compact flash transfer. So if you hold. If you hold the line guys. I'll get all set up and show you what I mean. Right. Here we go. This is a. I think it's here well we can just. PCM. CIA adapter. Uh, back in the 90s, these were really popular on laptops, these kind of PC IMA interfaces. Uh, advantage of this is, well, both the 600 and the 1200 have slots on the side where you can put things in. 500, 500 plus, and other machines don't, so you can't use this method, but this is a great way of doing it. So, um, there's several ways to get this to work. Well, getting this, first of all, yeah, kit from Amiga. Uh, kit to do this from Amiga kit, I'll put a link in the description. It comes with everything you need. I bought bits of it off eBay because I had bits already, which is really useful. So what I got when I bought mine off eBay was the adapter, 
and disk containing Bees My Workbench Boot HD install. Yay! So, we get one of these, which is a compact flash card. Uh, a lot bigger than your standard SD card. These are also were R so also used in digital cameras. So how do we do it? Well, basically, you take this, this way up, not the other way up, shove it into the Amiga. Just turn it to the side like this. Push it like that. Done! Yay, all set up. Right. So basically, take this, put it in the floppy drive, and boot. Now the advantage of this, no, you don't have to have a hard drive on your Amiga to, to play about with this, which is great. I do, and I've already install, installed the software on the Amiga hard drive, so I don't need this disk anymore, which is great. So let me just bring these round. My get old style photography as usual. Get this big piece of shit TV turned on that doesn't work right. There, fire up the old Amiga. It should boot straight up. A nice blank screen you're looking at there, guys. No, oh, it's all blank screen. Yay, there we go. Hey, so we're up. Right. Reposition you. Reposition you. Sorry about the ghetto style photography, but hey ho. I'm doing this on the fly and on the cheap, you know, so. So, here we've got Amiga workbench. So, as you can see there, going from left to right, your RAM disk. And my two part three partitions on my hard drive. The workbench will remain files on it. Games 1 and Games 2. I've already messed about with this a bit. So, I'll put it in this side up, picture side up, into the adapter. And lo and behold, did you see that? It appeared. Look at that. How much, how amazing is that? Yes. It's great. Fan dabby dozy. So if I run down here, double click on it, you can see I've already put some stuff on it. For example, we've got, there's a few escape disc images, games, uh, file, etc. There's also some stuff I've transferred from an old floppy, old save games. So let me just shut that down for a moment. I'm going to show you another part of the kit that it comes in. It's a great little tool. It might be called Easy ADF. It's, this one's called Track Saver. This is a fantastic bit of kit. Basically, we just select... Uh, so we're in... Where are we now? We're in Workbench. Single clicks on the meal, not double click. Why am I going in here? Ignore me, ignore me. We're going into Amiga. We're going to there. We go. I'm going to remove that. Let's go put it into Oh, I'm going to have to find it to So, for example, we'll do. We'll put this one on a floppy. So we just click on that. Okay. Select the drive, so we're going to put it on to DF0, which is the disk drive 0. Here I have an Amiga floppy, there's a bugger all on it. Basically shove it in Amiga, select format while writing, because I know this disk has not got anything on it. Select file to disk, OK it, and we get a wee calculator. Basically it's transferring the files, it's creating an actual disk from the EDF file that was on the floppy on the compact flash drive, which is extremely useful. It just takes a few moments here. Copy this across. Right, the Amiga kit one's about 14 or 15 pounds. I think in total, when I, the way I did mine, it was about 10 or 15. Extremely useful. Done! That disc is now has the um, reload kick on it, which is something I'll be doing in another video. 
And another advantage of this great device is it's hot swappable, i.e. I can just pull it out, yay, and shove it back at the PC, which I'm going to do just now. So, PC desktop here. I don't know where you can see that, that's my new player. Now, on the, my PC compact flash multi-card reader reads it this way up, which is the which is the opposite from where it goes into the uh, reader on the Amiga, which is always good for a laugh. So I'll just shove that in there. And look, pop straight up. I'll call it Amiga. And my files are immediately accessible. Now, there are a couple of things I need to warn you about. If you are going to do this, obviously you're going to need the kit. I'll put a link in the description. The card, the compact flash card, needs to be formatted to FAT. 16 or FAT, whatever you call it. FAT32 just does not work. Now, it can be done in Ubuntu, which is where I did it. It's easier to do in Windows. Windows, you just right click, format, select the option, and do and do it. There's messing around in the terminal with Ubuntu. But that's as simple as that, guys. That's how you transfer files from your Amiga or PC to Amiga and vice versa. So it's great if you want to put, you know, images like, here's a, ah, for me. Uh, put that on the on the car, transfer it across, burn it back to a floppy, play it. Also works vice versa with the software you get. And um, thanks for watching, guys. I'll put another here video shortly. Bye bye.